even if before the roof gets too mega hot today, if I can connect up even three more panels and have six connected, what the three are able to do right now that's already connected, I can really imagine what I can get out of the six and then the nine and then the 12. And 12 is the maximum I'm gonna put on this side here uh, right now anyway. And then the remaining panels I have are going to make a separate array over here to the side. These are Renogy 300 watt mono panels. And uh, these are very good panels. Definitely need a bath. super hot up here I'll show you this is the wire that I'm using for the solar now I'm not saying this is solar wire this is actually neon wire but it's rated I'll show you here see it says for tube sign um, but it's rated for being outdoors and the sunlight for years and years it's called tough hide it's solid copper not copper clad. They call it GTO wire. Man, I was telling you, it's it's a good substitute, and the diameter is identical for putting the ends and all on the wire. The MC4 connectors works out perfect. It's a good quality wire. Next thing I got here is like the same one as I took to the Philippines. This Echo Worthy, not the best brand out there. I'll tell you, it's not the absolute best you can buy. It's uh, a little bit of a budget light box in a way, but it's still it's very functional and This is for combining the different Arrays that I put together the different strings of panels and So it don't matter, you know, if your strings are in parallel or if your strings are in Series this will get them combined up. This gives them fuses if you kick this open There's a fuse inside of there. Let's see what this fuse here says that it's 12 amps, 1000 volts on that fuse. And then you've got a spark or a lightning arrestor right here and get that set up. So if it trips, those will change from, I believe from green to light red or orange, if I'm not mistaken. And you'll know it's tripped. Now the thing is you can't reset this. Um, if this blows, if it trips, you're gonna be without power and you're going to probably have to order one of these. I suggest to go ahead and order one of these and have it on hand as a backup. Um, you might be able to just even wrap it up in something to where it don't short out on anything and probably even store it inside the box. Then this right here is a DC breaker and it says DC 250 volt. It's not an AC breaker, it is a DC breaker. And be sure and differentiate on that. But this is a DC 250 volt breaker, 4,000 amp. And so uh, right there is going to be your breaker, which can also work as a cutoff for your solar. MC4 connectors connect up here. Your DC output coming back out goes right here and a ground right here. And this is what will head on in to your inverter. Um, if this is a long ways away from your inverter, I suggest putting a second uh, DC cutoff right there near to your inverter. Um, you can either use a DC breaker or they'll just have a cutoff PV cutoff switch. So that's what I'm using here. This box is supposed to be weatherproof. Um, it does have like a little gutter around the edge and it does have a seal in the top of it right here. And a lock and then a cap that'll go over the keyhole to weatherproof it even more. As far as brackets, I just came back from Home Depot and using these strong tie brackets instead of just the ones that came with the solar panels only. I'm trying to see if I could get tore into this box. So these are the brackets I've been using. They're really thick. 
they're really thick brackets um, I'm using the hole that sticks up in the middle to screw to the side of the solar panel and the others down in the roof now these are a heavy gauge this isn't that little light gauge flimsy little 90 brackets these are a really thick gauge on them super strong you don't want it flexing and working and wiggling and end up uh, tearing up your roof or leaking and all and these are the ones that originally came with the solar panels they did basically the same thing they rest it down and they had a little stainless screw underneath the bottom right there but the problem is is the profile was so low that it would not fit see down over on this hump right there and so um, I couldn't clear the profiles of where I needed to with this on one side I can if this lands on top of the hump I can appear on your metal here and this one here if it's down in the valley it clears and this one if it's up on the hump it works and these work out using them in unison together on one side and then the other all right so that's what i'm doing here and uh it's going to get really hot on me so my goal for this morning right now is to just get two more panels up and this is my internet company didn't they do a nice job securing their wire just laying on my roof but i'll get two more panels up right here and that'll give me six going for today i'll have everything here that maybe late in the evening i could get another set of three tied up and over the next couple of days i'll try to have all of these put in place it is mega hot up here and uh can't handle the heat here anymore so i do have three more connected they should be putting out power i'll route all these wires tie them nice and neat get them in uh, conduits and all when it's cooler but that is now six panels going two strings in a series so uh All right, so as you see, it's not using the grid right now. That's the grid, it's the solar, but there's a positive sign right there. It was at 45.9. It should get to where that the battery will stay full and it'll run just off the solar panels all day long until evening time comes or night time comes. And then it's going to use the battery down a little bit into the evening and then switch over to grid by the next morning after it's used the grid during the night it should go right back to operating on solar all day i want to know what i'm running for batteries and many of you remember i'm running these tesla batteries they're not the most uh optimal battery to run but actually they do very well they do pretty darn good i'm not trying to run this right now as like a 100 percent off grid type thing i i do plan on still using the grid power here but I'm separating my breaker box in half so what I'm gonna do is on one separate breaker box which I've already installed out there it's going to run all the things that I want to run off solar like the two air conditioner units the refrigerator um, the TV and then some LED lights now that is the bulk of our load that's the biggest part of our load now what I'm going to keep for sure tied to the grid is things like um, our clothes dryer, which we don't use very often. Melinda hangs our clothes out quite a bit, but if we need to use it, we'd use the power off the grid because um, that's a lot of amps being pulled and I only have one 5,000 watt inverter. The, I'm not going to upgrade and buy any more for here either for no more than we're here. The next thing be a hot water heater. Once again, it pulls a lot of amps, pulls it fast. I'll just use that off the grid as we need it. <laughs> and I know a lot of you are gonna find this funny, but Melinda and I don't really use hot water here very much. Um, we're, we're mostly just here during the summertime and we like the cool showers. It keeps our body cool. Melinda did not grow up taking hot showers. 
She don't like the feel of them. She don't like the way it dries out her skin. Oddly enough, uh, I did grow up taking hot showers, but had quit taking them because same thing, it dried out my skin. It pulled the oils and stuff out of my skin. And I would step out of the shower like in the summertime, just burning up hot. And um, I like to take that nice cool shower, step out of the shower, you're not sweating and everything and your skin's not all dried out. Um, so that's not a big issue for Mel and I anyway. It's just not. Now, during the winter time, yes, we like to use some hot water, some warm water, and we even limbed it then. But right now, we haven't been here much for winter, so it's been a uh, non-issue. Mel, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, your stomach's hurting? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Are you praying or what? Melly Belly's got an achy belly. <laughs> yeah. She done chopped up peppers and onions and tomato and cilantro and poured vinegar all over it and nothing but pure acid. She might as well just ate battery acid. And then radish. On a, yeah, and radish all this strong acidy stuff on an empty stomach with nothing else with it and now it's got her stomach all irritated <laughs> she's so smart <laughs> uh who it feels so good in this air conditioner i was dying up around that roof and just touched the metal felt like it was just burning my palms Holy cow. In fact, they are kind of shiny. They are a little glazed over. <laughs> Whew. That air conditioner feels so good. Yeah. So I got three more panels connected. Two more attached to the roof and three connected. But the guys helped me get all the panels on the roof. So now I don't have to wait on nobody. And uh, they helped me pass those things up. And tomorrow, I'll see if I can get more connected on there. And um, just keep on moving forward. I think it's going to pretty much wipe out hardly anything for us for an electric bill here, though. Yep. I think I will pull. Well, that's the reason you buy the solar. I know, but we never could make up our minds what we're going to do, and we've been gone to the Philippines so much. You know, one of the reasons that that solar um, can be handy even while we're gone is that we still have to keep a little bit of heat going in here. We'll have frozen busted pipes. So um, that's another thing it can do is we can put um, a little small space heater and set it down to a really low temperature. Now, Cap told me that up at the hardware store people that he used to work for my friend Craig that they have these little uh, little switch things up there these little relay thermostatic relay things that you plug that just plugs in an outlet and then you can plug something into it and it will automatically click and trip on if it gets below a certain temperature and that's really good for like if you need a light bulb or a heater or a thermal strip or something like that and you need to uh, keep things from freezing so I think it won't come on until it gets down to like I can't remember the deal I have to look it up or go by and see my friend Craig that owns that hardware store but I don't know it's like 30 something degrees and basically what it's going to do is keep things from freezing so um, that would also keep you from running a big power bill because you're not trying to keep it at 60 or 70 degrees comfortable for you to be in here you're just trying to keep things from freezing and so you're keeping the chill knocked out. And um, I think that worked pretty good, but we've also got a heater here um, that a couple of them, it's got therm actual real thermostats on them. Now I'm not talking about central heat, I'm talking about just a small heater that's just keeping the chill knocked out. And uh, those have thermostats on them, and I've done that with them before, set them. At, but that thermostat will only go so low. Um, but I think I kept it down like, in the low 50s if I wasn't mistaken and so it keep it 50 something degrees in here but um, that that might work too I might just use that again 
and then when spring comes I'll just have Mike to come over and unplug it so it don't run all the time. Solar is more efficient during the winter time if it's not cloudy. So your coldest days are usually clear sunny days in the winter because the clouds can't hold you know the clouds hold the heat in and so if there's no clouds the heat escapes right out and so um, that's your time that your solar is most efficient because solar likes cool temperatures and the panels put out more power on a clear but cold day so that'll be a winner right there winter winter chicken dinner um, I think some other things Mel and I are going to do is we're going to buy some extra of this radiant foam board like we're using on the house and we'll put some over like this glass door here to the north inside in here and over that window there and maybe over these back windows here as well of closing that up. It not only give us privacy of things in our house and keep the sun radiating off things in our house while we're not here but it'll also work to hold in more heat in here which means less electricity has to be used while we're gone but that's part of the part of the deal when you're staying on two different sides of the world you know and you still you're maintaining two different places um so i think the solar still gonna be beneficial don't you i think so i think that's where i need to be yeah it should really minimize what we use the guys are continuing to put siding on the house out here they're over in the shade working on the shade side and I'm glad to see that progress happen that's going to help out with the house a lot too. get things better sealed and weatherproofed yeah it helps to our taxes be good huh? yeah it helps raise our taxes <laughs> lower the electricity bill raise the taxes yeah and okay. uh but the foam board on the, those walls too that they're getting up behind the siding is going to help better insulate as well so i think that this winter when we're gone is going to be way better than before well i'm hot i'm going to relax um, continue to watch our videos and be supportive yeah, of uh very nice. of course we are not there in philippines to to do the house dog building of course what we show right now and what our concept or video is uh it's everything our life here. that's all our channel is ever about anyways yes. our life the builds are just the plus just sharing the life of um you know um an guapo american no just joking <laughs> just sharing our life of um you know um a um, mixed couple, you know, an interracial couple that we're both just human beings, though skin color don't make you a different species. And sharing our life between two different cultures is what our channel has always been about, of living a dual life between Texas and the Philippines. This is what our channel was about from day one. Growing a lot of our own food, trying to produce power and stuff our own to live a really, a, a really uh, self-sustained life. Yes, it's, what, it's not about it's always for been, house building. Yeah, it's yeah. not just only about house building, but of course, I do have projects going on at both sides of the world right now. And just sharing the struggles that we go through, um, the daily life, the, the mixing cultures, and, and how that even two people from two different cultures can get along and find common grounds and work together and build a life together. So that's really what this channel is about. And, and you know and also staying healthy and so uh, we're going to talk about that more on another video but we appreciate you and yes thank you so much for all your support and uh, bear with us you know I know our video we kind of slow a little bit but uh, once we go back in Philippines we're, we're back uh, back in the groove yes thank you all